so that if it were possible, they shall receive the very elect. He goes on to say, as the days of Noah were, so also shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. Before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus also mentioned with respect to his coming, the sun turning into darkness, the moon turning into blood, stars falling from heaven, all these things before he comes. Has any of this stuff ever happened? Yes. Young people, did you know all these things happened already? The sun darkened. May 19. 1780, prophecy fulfilled. The moon turned to blood, same night, May 19, 1780, fulfilled. And let me tell you, when the sun turned into darkness, there was no eclipse. There's no physical phenomenon that happened that would cause this. Only a supernatural one. Look it up. Stars fell from heaven, November 13, 1833. All these things took place. Well within the past, this is the year 2014. We are at the doors. I mean, I don't know. This brother right here, maybe when he saw the clean animals going in by sevens and unclean by twos, it just kind of slipped him that something was going on. Maybe he was too distracted by all those things the world has to offer. Like the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That when he did realize, it was too late. This deception, this deceiving deception, all started with one by the name of Lucifer. Who here has heard of the name Lucifer? Young, my young people, who's here heard of the name of Lucifer? Isaiah chapter 14 gives us a, a little description of Lucifer. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. The Bible says, How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? Lucifer is a covering angel, uh, I should say, was a covering angel in heaven. He would cover the glory of God. Verse 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Now Lucifer was a name given to him when he was in heaven. So when we read, and remember we're reading and we're trying to get understanding. When we read verse 13, 
And he says, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Wasn't he already in heaven? Wasn't he? So what does it mean? My young people, I want you to know that the Bible always explains itself. And it never contradicts itself. Never. If you find, or if you're using a Bible that you realize it says one thing in the beginning and something different in the end, that's truth mixed with error. But that's for another day. The question stands, what does it mean when Lucifer said, I will ascend into heaven, when he was already in heaven? The answer lies in the book of Romans. Turn with me to the book of Romans. <clears throat> Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 6. The Bible says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. You're going to bring Christ down? Is that what Lucifer is going to do? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 and 8, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. Verse 9 continues to say, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The devil is deceiving the world. His angels, they're not called angels now. What do we call them now? Demons. Just like Lucifer is not called Lucifer now, he's called Satan, the dragon, the devil. You see, when, when you see these things as someone dies and Yet, their spirit is alive and they're haunting this house. If we know Bible truth, this is not so. Because the breath without the body is dead. These are demons impersonating your loved one, my loved one. And if you don't know the truth, you will be deceived. Because when they start doing these little miracles, and if you're going based on what you see and what you hear, instead of what the Word of God says, you will be lost. My young people, I want to show you how the Bible explains itself. Here in Revelation chapter 12, It said the dragon, verse 9, that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Here is an example where the Bible uses symbolism to represent something. A dragon is used to represent the devil. Now I want you to jump up that same chapter. Let's go on up to... Verse 3 and 4. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. We already know that the dragon represents Satan, right? And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now verse 4 says, 
The dragon's tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. What does that mean? How does, this, how does, how does the tail draw a third of the stars? Let me give you a clue. The stars represent angels. We already know that the dragon represents Satan or the devil. Now we're trying to find out what this, how his tail drew them out. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 15. The Bible says, The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. So by Satan's lies and deception, he drew one-third of the angels down with him. Does it make sense? The Bible is clear. Back to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, Well, let's start with Verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth, that's us, and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he's had for a short time. The devil is walking around like a lion. Seeking to devour. Who here has a strainer at home? Who knows what a strainer is? What's a strainer, young lady? Oh, not a stranger, a strainer. <laughs> Sorry, a strainer. Have you? Something you use to sift flour with, right? <laughs> Turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 31. And this is Jesus speaking. And it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Faith, no move in faith. Things not yet seen. The Lord has prayed for you and I that our faith fail not, even though we read about these things, some of them came to pass already, but there's still some still come. When people say back in Bible times, guess what? The Bible's not done yet. It's almost done. John 3.16, who can, who can recite that for me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The only reason Jesus had to die was because of the sin problem that started with Lucifer. Do you realize God gave the ultimate, the ultimate gift, his life, for us? Verse 17 said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved.
Just a few pages down in John chapter 8. Verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You want to know what condemns the world? John chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Remember that man that was trying to climb up the rock when the water was coming up? He heard the message. We all have a choice to make. And let me tell you, not making a choice is making a choice. You understand what I just said? <laughs> it is time to accept the free gift that is given. If you so choose. Realize that there are many things being fulfilled even at this time. The commission is to go on into the world to teach, to give the gospel. The gospel is explained in Revelation chapter 14, verse 5 on up. The three angels' message that goes to each kindred, nation, tongue, and tribe about the judgment which is happening now. About giving honor and glory to God. About the mark of the beast. How many here know the mark of the beast is? Raise your hand. Alright. I see maybe 50% of the hands went up. It's time to spread the word to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Even though we are here in church today, even some of us here today do not know. It's time to accept the ultimate gift. As we close, if you realize today that there's some things you know, you have a, you have a Bible knowledge, you have information, but you don't have that understanding and you want that understanding through Bible study, through prayer, I want you to stand. And don't stand just to stand. I want you to stand and know why you're standing. Because the ultimate gift was given for your life and my life. And it is your choice whether or not you want to accept it. Realize we are not in darkness. We have all the answers right here. But the distraction of this world, <laughs> it was a time people would, would give their lives for one page out of this book. Now while uh, this book is so free, we, we don't even pick it up. You don't even understand that this is a blood-stained book. And if you don't get this understanding very soon, <laughs> you won't have this book. And the only thing you're going to have is what's in here, if you understand.